Uh, you're a big fan of Guitar Hero. Any favorite songs? <laughs> I loved Guitar Hero growing up too, man, so I gotta ask. We are here with, uh, with Cadence Weapon at Oceaga, but I say Cadence Weapon, a.k.a. Party Prince, a.k.a. Antagon, a.k.a. Payroll. What, what was the first name you went by? My first name was uh, Payroll. Payroll. Payroll, yeah. the, what was it, The Toll? Was that your first? Payroll Taking the Toll. That yeah. was the song. That was my first song I ever wrote. Can I find that anywhere? No, I can't even find it anywhere. I wish I still had it because it was so weird. It was like, it was very rudimentary. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love all the different uh, pseudonyms. Um, I want to go back in time a bit. I mean, you know, your father, you know, had a, his radio show on CJSR 88.5 FM, The Black Experience in Sound. Um, I feel like that, like, that had a big influence on you. Can you just talk a bit about that? Yeah, so my dad, he was a, a multi-format DJ before that was a thing. Like, he was playing, he would start the show with 2001 Space Odyssey theme. Yeah. And then he would play uh, Nas right after that. You know, he'd play uh, New York State of Mind. Love that. That's right? Amazing. He just didn't, this was before, like, you know, Diplo kind of, like, mashup culture and stuff. So yeah, yeah. that was his vibe. So I think that really influenced me a lot. That's why I make music that... You know, I use all different genres and stuff, and I just don't see any differences between them. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And speaking of different genres, or actually songs, was it the first song you DJ'd? If I have, it was uh, DJ Clue, The Professional 2, was that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went on my dad's radio show, and I played uh, a song off of uh, DJ Clue, The Professional 2. I played a song of Ghostface and Raekwon. I heard Ghostface is here. I don't know if you heard... I did. I heard Ghostface played yesterday at a random park in Little Burgundy. Okay, yeah, but he's not here, I think, right? No, no I don't think he's here. No. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, super random. Uh, you're a big fan of Guitar Hero. Any favorite songs? <laughs> I loved Guitar Hero growing up too, man, so I gotta ask. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, when I was <laughs> when I was uh, back in Edmonton, we were used to play a lot of Guitar Hero. That's true. Okay. Um, I think I was, I was not that good at it. <laughs> I found it really challenging. Um, I would play like the more simple songs. Like I think there might have been a Weezer song in there. Probably, yeah. yeah. I feel like anything like Aerosmith. I don't know. Say it ain't so. That I, I could be wrong. Though. It's all good, man. No, I love it. Um, you've performed everywhere. You've lived in a bunch of places, which we'll talk to, like Edmonton, uh, Montreal, Toronto. Uh, I want to ask if you've ever performed in Yellowknife because apparently you had a girlfriend that worked up there. Oh my goodness, yes, that's true. Yeah. Have you performed uh, in Yellowknife? Yes, I have. I played uh, Folk on the Rocks Festival in Yellowknife, and uh, a really good friend of mine, a woman named Pearl, uh, was uh, running the festival uh, booking. Okay, I love that. The fact that you play all this music and you've been everywhere. So And shout out, uh, shout out to her. She uh, did some of the artwork on After Party Babies. And she's on the front cover of that album, actually. She is. You have a, yeah, you have a, yeah. a bunch of people on that, which I love. Um, I want to talk about, you know, you were, being, you were with one record label for a bit. We don't have to talk about the name or anything. But um, for a while, you know, under that label and with um, your music, when you're performing, you felt like maybe you weren't appreciated um, when you were performing for crowds. But you mentioned... Um, when you were at the Big Dada 10th anniversary party, um, that was maybe one of the first times where you felt appreciated by the audience. Can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. It's just I always felt spiritually like my real home was in the UK. Yeah. And when I came there, I was signed to Big Dada at the time, and um, they really welcomed me, and it was so cool. Like I got to hang out with Jammer, and like that that show in particular. It was I was on stage it was me, Diplo, Roots Manuva, uh, a bunch of grime rappers and stuff, and it just felt like. I've, I've made it home, you know, yeah. and when I got on stage, it was just people instantly got it in yeah. a way that I hadn't really experienced before. Because in Canada, there's, uh, and it's, it's changed a little bit. I've been around for a while, so people have a better understanding of me, and they're like, oh, he's that guy, he, that's his lane. Yeah. Whereas when I first came on the scene, people were like, this isn't rap. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, we could talk about it, and I want to talk about that. Because, um, yeah, like I said, let's, if we're being real, you know, someone sees a black artist, like, oh, he, if he's not doing rap or hip-hop, like, what, like, what's the point, I guess you could say, which is obviously bullshit, in my opinion. Um, I want to talk about song, one song specifically, uh, Shadow Band. First of all, I talked to Miss Milano a couple of days ago, which oh, cool. I love that you have that collab with her. Um, I think that's so appropriate, because I feel like, if I'm being real, it's like some people haven't appreciated your music, because, again, you've experimented beyond certain genres. Um, was that why you made that song, or what was the reason why? So that? the reason I made that song, um, I feel like as an artist, it's really hard to actually reach my audience. Yeah. And I feel like it used to be when I first came on the scene, early internet era, it was really direct. Like you could post something on one of the social media platforms and it would just go directly to everyone. And now everything, it's just like how this festival probably 15 years ago, there was maybe no ads. 
Yeah. And now it's just one big ad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's fair. Um, but yeah, it's really about... Um, <laughs> I tried to make a kind of humorous uh, example of uh, a really extreme... Uh, paranoid conspiracy about being a shadow banned from everyone yeah, I think it's a real thing man like me being online on TikTok like people complain all the time about being shadow banned so I get it I, and was, I was thinking that would that I made that song too I thought it would be really good on TikTok yeah yeah no exactly and it's a shame that, like people like me shouldn't have to worry about that just like post and let it be but it's like yeah it kind of sucks when it doesn't get out there as you when you think it should be get out there but anyways it is what it is man uh, I want to talk about one date uh, March in March 2009, when Trevor Anderson nominated you for uh, Poet Laureate in Edmonton, um, which you ended up winning, and you were at the time, what was it, 23, 25, I believe? 23, you were the youngest yeah. Poet Laureate in history at that time. Uh, <laughs> just tell me about that. That was wild, yeah. Um, he came to my house, and he was like, hey, uh, do you want to be Poet Laureate of Edmonton? I want to nominate you. And I'm like, what is that? Yeah. And then when he explained it, I was like, oh, yeah, so I am I would be like the ambas literary ambassador of the city. And so I had written poetry and obviously made all my music and everything. I was repping Edmonton and everything I was doing. So it ended up working out. I ended up becoming Poet Laureate. But the crazy thing about it is when it, it became pretty big news. Yeah. Because it's like, wow, this rapper is being called a poet. And at that time, it was before Kendrick Lamar's winning, you know, Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. And uh, it's still in the era, especially in Canada, we're always a little bit behind the times with rap. Yep. And they were like, rap is crap. So, you know, people were just kind of like, rap is not poetry, it's not music, it's nothing. Fair so I, I came a, up against a lot of uh, derision. But you know, now you look back and it made Edmonton, it made them look like cool yeah. making that decision. It's like, wow, very forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, man. Uh, I want to ask about, of course, uh, artists you've worked with be besides Miss Milano. Um, it's also a shout out to you being, you know, I know you worked in Montreal, lived in Montreal for a bit. Me being from here, now I live in Toronto. Um, but uh, for people who don't know, you worked with Claire Boucher, otherwise known as Grimes, of course. Working with her in the mile end, just kind of briefly talk to me about that experience. It must have been incredible. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, Claire, she's a great person. And uh, I, we all knew uh, she was destined for success in some way didn't really realize it was going to be as big as it was but at, at the time like we we all kind of saw we were all a part of this big friend group it's like me her sean nicholas savage tops blue hawaii mac demarco and we all lived on the same block yeah. and really it should have been like it could be like a sitcom or something yeah. was, like we were living a movie and uh we saw claire become a musician she wasn't a musician at first, but then she's like making all this stuff on GarageBand. I remember all, I have all these great memories of going to her house. She lived on uh, basically Park and Van Horn, between Van Horn and Bernard. And uh, she was like, come over to my house, like listen to my record or whatever. And she plays me all of Visions. Yeah. And uh, at the time I was just like, damn, I think people are going to really like this. And it was quite an understatement. Exactly, right? And that's, you never know uh, where people will, uh, what they'll achieve. Um, I do want to ask just about, you know, the different kind of hats you wear, you know, your rapper, artist, uh, DJ, producer, poet laureate, out of all of those titles, what would you say is the most fulfilling? You know, I, I really think, I just think of myself as an artist. I feel like it's an all-encompassing thing. All of the different aspects feed into each other, and I feel like it strengthens the, at, at my core, I'm a musician, I would say. And I feel like it all ties back into that essence of who I am. Yeah. Awesome. That's all I got for you, man. I appreciate it. Right on. Thank you. Sweet. I loved your, your book, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man. Try my best. Appreciate it. <laughs>